doing here? What are you doing here? I'm here to get my Irish soda bread. I'm here to get my St. Joseph's pastries. That's what you come to Little Italy for, St. Joseph's pastries. You want Irish pastries? You go to Little Ireland. Yeah, the Irish. Do you have Irish soda bread? Keep what you order. What's that? What'd you order? Soda bread, but I don't have it. Guess I'll just have to make my own. Marching along in the big parade on St. Patrick's Day. I'll be up to me neck in shamrocks as I march along the way. I'll swing that old shillelagh as I wave to each colleen. I'll tilt me ear the better to hear the wearing of the green. Oh, the, the Kelly's from Killarney, the Murphy's from Kildare. The Hallahans and Callahans who came from County Clare. There'll be folks from dear old Dublin all the way to County Cork. They'll be marching in the big parade right here in old New York. Be in the big parade, strutting high and grand, and behind them will march a thousand cops who come from Ireland. Those beautiful songs of Erin, the band will play them all. We'll march along, we'll sing in the song, the harp will tear us all. Those sons and daughters of Erin, a hundred thousand strong, will be singing the songs of Ireland as they march along. Their eyes will shine with laughter, their hearts will all be gay, when the Irish all turn out to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We'll be marching along in the big parade on St. Patrick's Day, not for all of the tea in Dublin, but I ever stay away. I'll trip the light fantastic and how proud I'm gonna feel. The band will play, go with you, go away, a good old Irish reel. There'll be Cooney, Mulrooney, and Mickey O'Dowd Cutting up capers and pleasing the crowd Hogan and Grogan will kick up their heels Singing and dancing the jigs and the reels The Connells, O'Donnells, and Larry O'Toole Maloney, Mahoney, and Lefty O'Doole Nibble a man as happy as they on St. Patrick's Day 
I'll be marching along in the big parade, twinkle in me eye. We'll be proud as a thousand peacocks with our heads up in the sky. I'll be there, you can bet you, when the band begins to play. And the Irish all turn out to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. It's a lovely head of cabbage. Cabbage? What do you do with it? I'll make you something, don't worry. You, you eat it? You do. Oh my god. You don't nothing. Ah, <laughs> uh, Madonna May. What are you talking about? Look at these potatoes. Oh, those are for making gnocchi. This is for making gnocchi. <laughs> oh. Gnocchi. Uh, the only thing I can find green over here in honor of St. Patrick's Day. An old, an old piece of pizza. Say <laughs> prayer before we begin. Oh, okay. I can do that. I'm off today. He's off. All right. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, thank you for the food that you provided us. Thank you for good friends. And thank you for gift of everlasting life that you promised us. Um, may we earn that in your name. Amen. Amen. Everybody can be a cop. And cheap. <laughs> Fresco's finest and bravest. <laughs> and holiest. Oh boy. And holiest. <laughs> and Benito. Brother, brother. Good day everyone, I'm Chief Rixmer from the Cresco Police Department and today we're going to take a moment and we're going to show everybody how we can do a little special Irish treat. We're going to make corned beef and cabbage and Irish soda bread in honor of St. Patrick's Day. Before we get started, it's a lot of work in the kitchen so I've, I've contacted some of my good friends, leprechauns you may say, and I've asked them to come and help. So without further ado, um, gentlemen, we have Brother O Benito and Father O Sam who are here to help. So now that, that our uh, uh, it's not time for that. Yet. <laughs> that that comes later. Okay, so we're going to get started. We got the flame on the water. 
I have my local leprechauns opening the bag of meat. So what you're gonna do is get your corned beef and basically the best cut of a corned beef might be a little bit more money, but you can get them on sale as a flat cut. So take your corned beef, of course wash your hands first, which we already did. And none of us are wearing masks because we've all been inoculated with the vaccine, so we're good. Um, and you're gonna just take your corned beef, lay it into the pot. Now, if you look, here's an important part. Inside this bag, there'll be a little packet of pickling. You want to save that because that's going to go in. So the next piece of meat, right in there. Sometimes the uh, sometimes the pickling pack will get stuck to the meat, so you just got to remember to take it out. And interesting enough, um, corned beef and cabbage is not an Irish, it's not an Irish meal. It, um, it came to be right here in the good old U.S. of A. Traditionally, uh, Irish people had ham and cabbage, but ham was too expensive um, for a lot of the immigrants that came over from Ireland. So way back when, they would buy corned beef. They would buy the beefs off the... Um, the China tea uh, trading ships, and what they would do is they, which is why they boiled it as well, um, they would boil the meat three times to get the brine out of it, and then the third time they would put the cabbage and the potatoes in. So the corned beef actually was just a much cheaper meal for them, and they could actually afford it. Um, and everybody thinks that's an Irish tradition, and it's not at all. Oh, it's an American tradition. So. We have the meat in. Now this is going to be your this is going to be your spices for it. It's basically pickling spices, but you want to make sure you get them in there because it's a big it's a big part of it. So what we'll do is we're going to get the uh, the corned beef in there. We're gonna get the pickling spices in there. You wanna bring it up to a boil, which takes a bit, probably close to, uh, with this much water, 45 minutes before you get it to a boil. And then once you get it to a boil, you wanna lower it to a very low simmer. The idea behind it is you wanna slow cook the meat so it comes out nice and moist and tender. We have the meat in the pot, we have the pickling spices in the pot, I have my assistants, and now we're going to take it to that next magical level. And a lot of people may not do this, um, but it's always been a tradition. One of the things to put in the water is Guinness. So, hold on. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> okay. So the Guinness actually gives the uh, gives the water a nice little flavor, and it gives uh, it gives the meat a little bit of a smoky flavor. So right now, because we're using bottles, I usually use two cans, the tall cans. We're going to use bottles. So, gentlemen, just pour it in. Pour your Guinness in with the pot. Two bottles you're gonna put in? Yeah, three. F actually, four, but go ahead. He's up to suck. Oh, the... Okay. They fall for it all the time. Yeah, I knew <laughs> that's where he was going. I know it. <laughs> ah, you guys missed out on that. But we'll open the third one <laughs> and we'll put it in. Because it gives it, it really does. It gives it a nice, it gives it a nice little flavor. So once that's in, stir it around a little bit. And everything is ready to go. So now this is gonna take a while. So again, plan your day. Um, you want this to be on a low simmer, probably a good three hours, three to four hours. <laughs> Tell me, ma, when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone.
So, um, what, whoa. You need the big spoon. I like that. The big spoon. <laughs> I, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this again up to a, uh, we're going to bring it up to a boil. Then we're going to immediately lower it to a simmer, just a little rolling simmer. You're going to put your lid over it, just enough to let some of the steam escape. And then just let it go. Check on it every now and then. Flip the meat. Um, you can move them around. And then after about three hours, you should be ready to, you should be ready to go. So after three hours, what we'll do is we'll take the potatoes, which are just your regular red, red potatoes, about the size, uh, like a pool ball, pool, uh, pool cue ball, um, and your cabbage. We're going to put the potatoes and the cabbage right in the pot with the meat. Some people put carrots in. I don't. I just go strictly with the potatoes and the cabbage. Put it in with the meat. Then we'll cook that for about 15, 20 minutes. We'll take the meat out, foil it, tend to foil over it so it reabsorbs the juices. Whenever you cook meat, they always say put foil over it, let it reabsorb the moisture. And then we'll cook the uh, cabbage and potatoes for about 45 minutes an hour till they're tender. Then you pull it all out and serve. Now in the interim, we're gonna end up making, but you have time for this, make your soda bread. Um, you wanna make with enough time to cool before you, uh, before you serve it. You don't wanna cut it when it's piping hot. So you wanna at least let it sit outside or sit someplace where it can cool for about an hour. And uh, through the magic of TV, we'll be able to do that a little bit later. So because it's a commercial grain, we'll boil the water much more quickly. Okay, so we're about two hours in and we're going to make the soda Irish bread. <laughs> we're just kidding. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> we're gonna, now we're going to make a little Irish soda bread. Um, what we did to save time is I kind of pre-mixed it. So in here we have four cups of flour, three tablespoons of sugar, Three quarter teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, raisins as much as you like, put them to taste, caraway seeds, optional. Traditionally, my, uh, my nanny would put them in and she used to use a lot of them, so we're kind of used to that. Um, one table, one tablespoon of baking soda. Now, that's soda. all you're drying soda. here. Soda. 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 Baking yeah. soda. So that's no. all your drying ingredients. Soda. So what we'll do is, we'll just put it in a bowl. So it's all, all pre-mixed, so we're ready to go. Don't throw um, the recipe away. I know, we gotta keep that. So oh, now, what we'll do, you want two eggs, without the shells. <laughs> What come first, chicken or the egg? Anybody know that? Uh, the chicken. I would think so too. Put a piece of shell in there. Here's a neat trick. Something you don't When do you're cooking, day. if you drop a piece of shell into your egg, use another piece of shell to get it out. Works great. Um, now we're gonna put a little buttermilk in there. I need a cup and a half. Do we have a cup measure? Mm-hmm. Let me assist you. Thank you. In that one cup? Yes, sir. Perfect. And I'll borrow this. So, what we'll do now, we've got our raisins in there. We have caraway seeds. We have all our dry ingredients. Now we're going to do a cup and a half of buttermilk. Now, some people use sour cream in there, mm. in their recipe. Um, we always used buttermilk. I don't know why. That's just how they did it. So, um, you want to whisk this up a little bit, mixing the eggs in with the buttermilk. Sometimes you can even pretend like you're a little egg beater. Mm. We, um, 
these were the things now like St. Patrick's Day when we were kids could have been uh, could have been a Wednesday or another day but we always did it on um, we always had St. Patrick's Day at our house on a Sunday so as a kid I could always remember uh, my dad did all the cooking which I think is where I got my my love for cooking and uh, we'd be out playing probably at this point not baseball yet we'd probably still be playing street hockey out in the street in front of the house and I can remember coming in to uh, to the kitchen and we lived in a little tiny apartment six of us and a dog up above my grandmother and coming up those steps and smelling the bread cooking and the uh, and the, and the meat cooking it was nice it's a nice memory oh before I do this I forgot you need one stick of butter so what you do with the butter is you want to kind of cut it up into p-shaped sizes perfect so sometimes it's easy if you freeze it but this butter is cold enough where we can just We need to be paying attention for when uh, you take this back. Yeah. So you cut them into pea sizes. I think there's a big market in Mexico for Irish soda. Bread. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Many. Yeah. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll kind of spread these around. So you can, like I said, do this. Once you get your meat going, you can do this. Um, if it was St. Patrick's Day, you can watch a parade on TV. And here's, here's another fun fact. Um, everybody sees St. Patrick's Day as this big party. And uh, in Ireland, it was actually not a party. It was a very solemn day that marked um, the death of St. Patrick. And history on St. Patrick is, so what you're going to do is break the little pieces of um, butter up. Let them get coated with, uh, with the flour mix. So uh, St. Patrick was actually born in Britain, was he? he was born in Ireland. He was born in Britain and he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and he was brought back to Ireland where he was put into slavery and uh, he was a slave for about six years and uh, he finally escaped back to Britain where he um, after a certain amount of time he went back to Ireland to spread the word of Christianity and one of the one of the things that it, one of the reasons why that's one of the reasons why it's such a, a solemn day um, and one of the things he did was everybody kind of attaches the shamrock to, um, to Ireland and, and Irish people. The thing behind the shamrock, the shamrock was actually a, uh, a very um, special, influential plant in Ireland way back when because um, it signified the coming. It signified that spring was coming. So St. Patrick used the shamrock because it. Uh, they held the Irish people held it so high in such high regard. He used the shamrock to teach them about the Holy Trinity. It was a. Uh, it was a, a you know a visual for them that they could understand. So that's that's how that got to be. And in Ireland. Again, it wasn't until around 17, no, 1970 that they actually let the pubs be open in Ireland. So on St. Patrick's Day, the pubs were all closed up because it was, it was a holy day of obligation. Now you move over here, go across the pond, and it's just a big party day where um, everybody, is, everybody is wearing the green. doesn't matter who you are. For that day, you're Irish. And it turned into a huge celebration. As we can see. As we can see. <laughs> so.
It gets a little tricky here mixing it. You just gotta keep mixing it around. Eventually it's gonna get nice and sticky and become a bread texture. Um, at that point, it's always good to keep a little extra flour around so you can kind of like uh, put it on your hands or on the tabletop for when, for when you need the bread. Um, if one, one of you find leprechauns want to rub the inside of that pan with the butter, so you want to coat all the sides with it, just so it doesn't stick. I have a spray. <laughs> that would take the mystique out of it, I guess. We'll do it the, yeah. the rustic way. The, exactly. Like, like Nan and I used to do. As my grandmother would say, make yourself useful as well as ornamental. <laughs> so she had a mouth like yours. Oh yeah. Hmm. Now I know where you get it. Now, now I know where you get it. Okay, so we see how now it's turned into. My grandmother was sweet. <laughs> mine was. <laughs> mine was a Spitfire boy. She could raise hell with the best of them. Annie O'Reilly. Did she own a pub? No. Um, all my, um, all my family, they're all, you know, my father's side of the family was from Northern Ireland, uh, County Down, Down Patrick, and my mother's side of the family was from County Cavan, which was, um, lower. And, uh, they both, you know, they came over, see the raisins? Yeah. Now you're seeing it. Can't you do it without raisins? I can, um, but it takes the sweetness away from it. So um, the raisins give it a nice little sweet flavor. There's a little bit of sugar in here, very little, three tablespoons. But um, it comes out nice. So, Okay, so we preheated the oven at 350. Um, we're going to put the bread in there and just let the magic happen. Take, leave it in there for about an hour. Um, one, way to, <laughs> one way to tell if it's, if it's done is to take like a toothpick, a wooden toothpick, or a, a skewer, poke it in there. If it comes out clean, you're good to go. Okay, so we're going to check on the meat, and you're going to see that we're up to a boil now, and all that fat has kind of rendered off so we want to get it out of there so you just scoop it as best you can it's all right if a little stays in there but you see how it's how we're up to a big boil now so we definitely want to lower that you want to get it back down now to a nice little rolling ball boil scoop as much of this as you can out Serves no purpose. You got somebody, maybe in-laws coming over, you don't like them, feed it to them. See what happens. It's not very Christian-like. Nah, that was only a joke. <laughs> so, now that that's out, you can see we just want to get it to a low, low roll. Just so it kind of, it's, it's like... I learned this term from another video that I happen to see. Um, Till the meat is like dancing. Ah, oh, uh, dancing. See, I paid attention. Yes, very good. <laughs> very nice. And, um, they, and now we're just gonna cover it a little bit. Question. Yes. The pastor can't give you a... A mint? Look at this guy. I, I, wanted, I wanted you to do a, a little commentary on his on his use of the sleeve to open yeah. up. Did you, did you notice that? Yes. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed. Very inventive. I yeah. thought maybe he just didn't want you to use Well, ever since I was a kid, I, sleeves were meant for two things. Covering your hand, lifting some hot, and it, wiping it, your... It, it, more than we need to know. More than we need to know. My mother would say, use a napkin. I'd say, why? Well, I got my sleeves. And now, then the spoon would come out. And now poor Michelle has to do yeah. it. <laughs> 
My mother was so proud of me. I was an altar boy. She was in the front row every Sunday. I would be there patiently waiting for the priest to raise the host and the blood of Christ, and I would ding the bell. Of course, the first time I got to do it, I was a little... You would have been into the altar one. I was a little too excited, and I sounded like a, a trolley in San Francisco going out. <laughs> When you were a little boy, not drinking the altar wine or breaking the bells, mm -hmm. what was Lent for your family, for you back then? What, what, what went on? Lent was, um, my, my mom was, she was our, um, I guess you could say our spiritual rock. So uh, she made sure that every Sunday we were at Mass, um, that we not only went but we participated and uh, when I, ne I remember when Lent was as I was younger when Lent rolled around it just meant I had to give something up so and she would always ask us what are we, we going to do for Lent so for me it was always kind of like well I got to give up something that I really like to do what is it going to be and I would settle on something and then oddly enough St. Patrick's Day was like the halfway point <laughs> so when you hit St. Patrick's Day, you're like, well, I'm halfway through giving up what I want to do. Then um, I kind of, as I, as I got older and I understood more, I was, I guess, kind of like a, uh, I guess I bucked the system a little. Um, and I said to her, I'm not giving up anything for that. And she said, you have to. I said, no, I don't have to give something up. I'm just going to change something that I do to be better. So um, that's... After I got to start walking, she kind of like thought about it. So, well, that's not such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So that's that's always my life teaching. People like don't, don't give up something like talk. Give up anger. Give up jealousy. Give up things that, that diminish not only yourself but other people. And the be but particularly the people around you, the people you love that get hurt most by those things. And just be at the other end of life a better person. Whatever you you know. I'm a firm believer in, in you're always going to make mistakes, you're always going to do things, you're always going to regret things that you do, because you do them in a moment where you may not be completely in control of your feelings, or your emotions, or your thinking, but uh, if you can think about it, and, and take it, and just make something good come out of it, whether it's a learning experience or not, you know, I'm going to think twice before I do that or say that. I'm going to think twice. I'm not going to do that anymore. And uh, go with it from there. That comes with age, though. It's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. The way things are, you're, you're not really free to express yourself as you want to express yourself. As you feel is, is um, I guess, your God-given right to. Um, and I get it, you don't want me to say certain things, and I understand that. You don't want to hurt people's feelings. But um, the only thing that I say, you can change a lot of things in, in me, and you can make me not say a lot of things and not do a lot of things. But as far as my belief in, in Jesus and, and my belief in my religion, that you will never, ever change from me. So, and, and you shouldn't have to. Nobody should have to feel that whatever they believe in is, is somehow wrong because certain other people think it is. Um, that's just, you know, the other stuff is all, it's all nonsense in a sense. It's, uh, you know, how we see people, how we treat it. If we just, if we just, did, actually, it comes right down to it. Just do what Jesus told you to do. Um, read the Gospels, follow his words, and we won't have these issues. That's Pretty exactly much. what Pope Francis just did in Iraq. Yeah. You know, again, from the beginning of this day, from the first day one, his message has been consistent. We're all sisters and brothers. Exactly. And we need to pray for each other, and we need to respect one another. Right. And to embrace our differences as, as our strengths, not, not as threats. But as strengths, and and you can do that. I really think you can do that by um, by still holding true to your values, 
and and your your faith. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think um, everybody has to kind of like I don't know have more tolerance for each other, right? And not not immediately get up in each other's face and say you can't say that or yeah. you're not allowed to do that. You know, so it's weird. It's a it's I was always under the belief that um, things are cyclical. Um, the pendulum always swings back, and you go off course for a while, and then you learn, hopefully you learn from the mistakes, and you learn from the good points of it, and then it swings back to normalcy, before it swings the other way again. <laughs> it is, it is like that. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy times we live in. What do they say, it's a song said, times they are changing. They are changing. It's Okay, so here we are. Um, the meat's been cooking for a couple hours, so now we're going to get down to our last hour where we put the cabbage and the potatoes in. So right now, all I'm going to do is quarter the cabbage. Um, some people like to think, well, we'll cut it into eighths, but you don't want to do that because you want to cut right along the stem, peel some of your your old stuff away and then set your cabbage in because if you cut it in eighths what's going to happen is all these leaves are going to be floating around in your in your uh, in your pot so just quarter it like so the edge off the stem right down Quarter, quarter, get rid of the loose stuff, feed that to the bunny rabbits outside, they love it, they enjoy St. Patrick's Day too, again I said, St. Patrick's Day, everybody's Irish. So now what we're going to do is, with our meat in here, we're going to just dump your potatoes, your whole red potatoes, just dump them right in there. Carefully, you don't burn yourself. They're going to sit right down to the bottom. Using your cutting board. We're going to start taking these veggies out one at a time. And you'll see, if you remember, they were kind of bigger when they went in. This is why I say they're going to shrink up. You're going to lose a good third. You're going to lose a good third of your, the weight of your meat just through cooking by it shrinking. So we got our potatoes in there. Or as my nana used to say, the potatoes. <laughs> the potatoes is in there. Our meat's out. Our cabbage goes right in with the potatoes. Now, you remember when we had the meat in there, we had it down to a slow roll simmer. We're going to want to bump it up now. You want to get it back to a boil and then lower to a simmer. One of the most important things that you can do at this point is you want to cover this meat with foil. You want to wrap it nice and tight and just let it sit because all this steam that's going up right now, once you wrap it, the meat will reabsorb that moisture and it will give you a real nice tender cut of beef when you're ready to eat. So, okay, so we took our meat out of the pot, we put our potatoes and our cabbage in there for the last 45 minutes to an hour. Just keep an eye on it, poke it, when it's tender, it's ready to come out. One of the most important things you can do, though, at this point, is tent this meat with foil. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you can dry, it, it can actually get a little dried out. So, um, anytime you cook meat, steak, Chicken, you name it. 
take it out and tank it with foil because what it'll do, it'll reabsorb the moisture into the meat and you'll have a much ten more tender, juicy piece of meat when you're ready to eat it. And that's it. So now what we do is let these babies go. And once that's done, I'll show you how to slice the meat um, always against the grain. Some people slice it with the grain and they say, why is my meat so tough? Well, it's like eating string. Once you slice it against the grain and you're gonna have little bits, your meat will be nice and tender, easy to chew, even for the people with no teeth. So. <laughs> Everybody eats. So we're taking out the potatoes and the cabbage. What you wanna do is um, as you're pulling them out, fork the uh, cabbage, make sure that the fork goes in nice and soft. If you feel a little uh, resistance, leave it in a little bit more. You don't have to leave the pot on. The water's hot enough to finish cooking it. Um, fork one of your potatoes, make sure that feels uh, soft, and just get ready to eat. Then we're gonna cut the meat. It's gonna be a party. Okay, so we got the meat. This is three of the five pieces. Again, you can see how much they shrunk up from when we first started. What you want to do, okay, I like to just take a little of the uh, fat cap off. Um, so you, some people like it. I like to leave a little bit on. Not too much. Then the key to it is find the grain. You can see, you can kind of see that the grain runs this way. So what you want to do is slice your meat against the grain. And you can see there, it breaks apart easy. As opposed to if you cut it the other way, it's going to be strands. So. Mm. So and you gotta you gotta watch the grain because sometimes the grain can actually change. It can change in the meat a little bit. Really? So yep. Yeah. So what we'll do is um we'll have uh We'll make a corned beef sandwich. Again, my hands will wash, so. You should have gloves on. Yeah, well, I don't. Just saying. Um, <laughs> so the hands will wash several times because we watch that. Again, cut the cut some of the fat cap off. Now, if I were a barbecue, if I were going to smoke this on um, this type of meat, like a brisket. I would want the fat cap on because that wow. that's where you keep your fit flavor. So, in a, in like, it's almost like it's they call it a corning process. It's almost like a pickling process. If not, this would just be a um, a brisket, a beef brisket. So, like, um, regular brisket is great Texas barbecue when you do a pack of brisket. Or, um, uh, our Jewish friends will have brisket for the holiday. Uh, that's a big, um, brisket is a big, it's a big, you know, it's like a, kind of like, for their, for the, our Jewish friends holiday, um, a brisket is kind of like our, you know, a turkey on Thanksgiving. Day. And it's a great, it's delicious. Nothing like a good, um, you get a good brisket sandwich at a kosher deli, and you are well, you're in for a treat. So now look at this one. 
there's different parts. So there's the flat cut, and then there's the um, the thicker cut. So you'll you'll see how the this is where I say you got to watch. See how your grain is running this way, and then it runs this way. The pack of the grain right now is running this way. Yeah. So you want to now you can see it, and like I said, if you're not sure which way the grain is going after you cook it, a little trick is to look at the meat before you cook it, look at the grain, and then notch a little piece off. This way, after you cook it, you look for that little notch piece and you know exactly where to cut it. This guy's good. Yeah. He knows his stuff, no joke. Take a piece out here for you. Take one of those little nubs. All Italian, but a little bit of Irish. Yeah. Hey. What's going on in my kitchen? I'm making the Irish shower for you. It's St. Joseph's Day. What about St. Joseph? It's St. Joseph, baby. And what about the Irish? And what about this? Who wants to eat this loaf of sawdust? Or do you <laughs> want to eat this beautiful St. Joseph paste? Who are you? Uh, you look a little familiar to me. Exactly. All right. How about we eat both? Okay. All right. <laughs> Says he loves her, all the boys are fighting for her. Knock at the door and they ring at the bell, saying hello, me true lover, you well. Out she comes as white as snow, rings on her fingers, bells on her toes. Old Johnny Mercy says she'll die if she doesn't get the fella with the rogue when I. I'll send me ma when I go home. Actually, we break bread together. Okay, that's what we're gonna do, break bread together. Say Joseph, say Patrick. That's it. Cheers. Uh, Thank you, Lord, because through this family you bring food on our table. Also, you bring friendship in order to feed our souls. We ask to protection for all the people who is hungry, not only of food in the world, also to love and companion. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Them all come as they will for the Talbert Mooney she loves still. I sent me ma when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They won't be hair, they sold me comb, but that's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is a belle of Dublin City. She is a curtain, one, two, three, pray would you tell me who is she? Talbert Mooney says he loves her, all the boys are fighting for her. Knock at the door and they ring at the bell, sing hello, me through, love her, you well. Out she comes as white as snow, rings on her fingers. Bells on her toes. Old Johnny Mercy says she'll die if she doesn't get the fella with the robe. And I, I'll tell me, ma, when I go home, the wife won't leave the girls alone. They won't be hair, so we come, but that's all right till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is the belle of Dublin City. She is a curtain, one, two, three, play with the Apparently not enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Except when it's done, it's a, fried bread's a lot moister than this. This tastes like sawdust when you eat it. Well, there we go. <laughs> Fellini. <laughs> Martina Scorsese over yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> a load of bread. 